Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video would suggest, maybe I'm being a little bit snarky, but I, it does, my question is, do quality tourists grow on trees? And it, it's sort of me being a little bit, a little bit snarky in this video, but I thought about this and making this video when I read this article from Hua Hin Today, that's huahintoday.com. Article is titled, Thailand to quote, focus on quality tourists who can spend more, unquote. And I've made a lot of videos on this channel, especially here recently regarding this, this notion of quality over quantity. I mean, I really don't really understand the logic behind this. Now, let's be clear. When we talk quality and quantity, etc., I'm not talking about letting in you know, foreign criminals or folks that are indigent or something like that. I'm talking about, you know, there seems to be this prevailing paradigm that's shifting toward trying to attract one million super wealthy individuals and just kind of giving short shrift to the 40 million folks that just got on a plane and came to Thailand, spent some money, didn't commit any crimes and went home. You know, I, I, I don't understand why we're going for one over the other. It, to me, it, any tourist that comes here, you know, with enough money to pay for themselves, pay their own way, who doesn't, you know, commit a bunch of crime, and not even a bunch, doesn't commit any crimes or act in a criminal manner, and just comes to Thailand, spends some time here, spends some money here, has some fun and leaves. I mean, why are we trying to look for anything other than that? I, I don't really get it, but okay. Uh, let's go ahead and quote from this article. Again, Thailand to, quote, focus on quality tourists who can spend more, huahintoday.com. Quoting directly, the post-pandemic recovery of Thailand's tourism sector will focus on quality rather than quantity. Deputy Prime Minister and Energy Minister Supatanapong Punmichau said earlier this week. Uh, my my kind of question is, what's the Energy Minister doing talking about this? I, I, and don't get me wrong, they're all in cabinet, so you know I'm sure that he was involved in the discussion. But I I think it's interesting. I'm very much an American in the in the in my upbringing, and the the parliamentary system is very different in many ways to the system we use in the U.S. And one one aspect of this is the cabinet kind of operates in these parliamentary systems as kind of one more cohesive operation, whereas. In, in the States, cabinet members tend to kind of stay in their own lane. You never hear the energy secretary in the U.S. talking about, you know, something having to do with tourism. It's just not in his portfolio, for lack of a better term. I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm just saying it just, it's strange to my, when I read these things, it's strange to me. When I see someone from TAT talking about tourism or the tourism and sports minister talking about tourism, okay, I think to myself, yeah, that's the guy that, He's the tourism guy, but maybe that's just me. Quoting directly, the Thai government recently announced ambitious plans to attract 1 million foreign tourists by April next year. The arrival of foreign tourists will be helped by the easing of restrictions, including the removal of mandatory quarantine requirement for all visitors to Thailand from November 1. Well, that remains to be seen. As we've done other videos on this channel, not quite certain that's gonna happen just yet, but it looks like, we're, I'm being cautiously optimistic that it will come to pass. Speaking at the Bangkok Post Forum 2021, DPM Supatanapong said, instead of relying on 40 million tourists to generate 2 trillion baht in revenue, we will focus on quality tourists who can spend more. And, and then this was interesting in this article, the Thai government also recently announced plans to attract 1 million foreign expats to the country, which, are these plans for tourists or expats? What are we, I, I don't, that didn't make, a ton of sense to me, but okay, never mind. Uh, this notion of replacing 40 million with 1 million and getting the same revenue, I, I and it, they don't actually say in here, to be clear, that, that they're going to end up with the same revenue, although it's kind of implied from the way I read it. Now, again, and I kind of restate this, I just don't know why we need to discriminate against perfectly good quantity of folks that just want to come here and be tourists. And, and let me also be clear, a lot of people have corresponded with me and they, they think I'm kind of negative on Thailand. I'm really not. That's, that's not the purpose of these videos. 
you know, I love Thailand and I really want Thailand to do the best that she can. And I just sometimes think people get blinders on, especially when they are looking at the same issue for a prolonged period of time in the same way. And sometimes I think that can, they, folks can get into kind of an echo chamber where they're only talking to people that are thinking like them and they're not, may, they're, they're maybe losing sight of the forest for the trees, if you will. Point of this video and just kind of my opinion, you know, I think we should really rethink the notion of, you know, only going after or the implied notion of, of specifically seeking you know, quality, this high quality, when we've had a really good run with just standard middle-class tourists coming to Thailand. It's actually been quite good. It's been good for the country for decades. And hopefully, you know, maybe there'll be some policy rethinking and maybe we'll kind of not, at the very least, not give the cold shoulder to a large number of people who have the resources and just want to come to Thailand, have a good time, not cause any problems and go on home.